Welcome back to my channel everyone, Street Tips here. This is my six liter silver cell, also known as the Beast. And as you can see up here, the uh, current flow has dropped way off now. And so what we're gonna do is, I think it's because the uh, anode filter is all clogged up with slimes. So the first thing we're gonna do here is kill the power to this thing and take this anode electrode bar out of the way and move it as long as we keep this thing up out of the electrolyte we can use it over and over now what I'll do is uh, I'm gonna lift the anode filter out of the cell and the, the cover with it I'm gonna try to put it in this beaker right here carefully try not to make a big mess This is just some condensate down here. Let me kill that light. That light ruins the view inside the cell. And uh, here's what we've got going on down inside of our electrolytic silver cell. Just look at that, man. That is beautiful, pure silver. It's growing good out from the rim towards the center of the cell just like we want it to. I'm gonna take a glass rod and knock these crystals down. They're very chunky, very solid feeling, nice, healthy, big, chunky, pure silver crystals. Just gonna knock this stuff down. The bottom, is very thick and heavy crystals growing on the bottom. This is exactly what we want to see for the silver cell operation. This is absolutely perfect. I'm going to put the cover on this thing to keep anything from falling down in here. Now we're going to turn our attention over here to the uh, clogged up anode filter basket. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this uh, clogged up anode filter out of here. Should come out of there very easily. I'm gonna put that over here with the other used anode electrode filters. Here's how it looks down in the bottom of the casing for our anode filter. And I've made up a new filter I'm just going to drop this right in now. Now what I'll do is take some of my impure silver shot in this uh, container here. And we're going to put some of this impure silver into our newly prepared anode filter. This is silver that I recover from my gold refining. I use sterling silver to refine gold. And then I pull it back out with nitric acid boils. And then I recover the silver nitrate solution, cement the silver out on copper, and then melt it into these granules that you see here in this container that I'm spooning from. And this is the impure silver that I use for my electrolytic silver cell. This silver that I'm spooning out is about 98% or so silver. The rest is mostly copper, but there are some platinum group metals in here as well. And uh, the value of this stuff is indeterminable. So what I gotta do with this is melt it into these granules and run it through my electrolytic silver cell to get it to three nines fine. So then the value is easily determined. Now we're going to take the cover off the silver cell. One more quick look at all that beautiful, beautiful high purity silver in there. And what I'll do is just carefully take our anode filter and place it back on the cell. 
Just pick it up like so. Let me adjust this camera a little bit for you. It's going to set this right back on the filter, or on the, uh, the silver cell, like this, with the new filter installed. Now what we'll do is uh, reinstall the anode bar here. This is an anode electrode bar made out of pure silver, cast into a piece of 10 gauge wire. I have some of these for sale on my eBay site. I'm gonna rig it back up here to the power supply. Now I'm re-energizing. Let me get this out of the way. We're gonna re-energize the power supply. And we got zero, count them. Zero current flow through there. We gotta give it time for the uh, electrolyte to soak into that new filter and make contact with the impure silver in there. I remember the first time I tried to do this, uh, change out the anode filter mid run because it got clogged up with the silver cell slimes. And I put everything back together and uh, energized the power supply and it was zero and I freaked out. I said, oh my goodness, what have I done here? But if I just wait and give it some time, it takes a little while for the electrolyte to soak in to the new filter. It took a few minutes for the electrolyte to come in contact with the impure silver down here in our anode basket. But now we've got it up to a current flow of about 1.8 amps. And that's what we want to see. Now that we've uh, pegged out our current flow at 1.85 amps, what I'll do is I'm going to install an inline automotive type fuse. And what we're going to do is I've, I've tried to put this on the positive side and it's not rigid. So it just kind of falls and stumbles around up there. And one viewer suggested putting it on the negative side because the negative side is connected to a rigid connection down here in the back. And that fella's name, I told him I'd give him a shout out because I didn't even think about it. It's H-A-L underscore 9K. He said, put the, put the uh, fuse on the negative side because it's rigid. And I told him I'd give him a shout out in my next Silver Cell video. So this is a shout out to HAL9K. I think that's a reference to the uh, Space Odyssey 2010 or whatever it is about the HAL 9000 computer that took over a spaceship and tried to kill the astronauts. Anyway, thanks to HAL9K for that excellent advice. This was a great idea. I had tried to put the fuse on the positive side and uh, it was, I had to prop something up against it to keep it stable because it wasn't a rigid connection. It's just sitting in the anode basket. But I, I just like to say, I read all the comments in the comment section of each video. And uh, sometimes people come up with some good ideas and I use them. And I'll give you a shout out if you uh, make a beneficial suggestion. This is an inline automotive type fuse connector. I've got a fuse in here. It's a three amp fuse right there, three amps. And so what this will do is this will protect the cell from shorting out. If it shorts out, then this fuse will blow and I need the current flow to go to zero. I understand the power supply has limit current limiting on it but I don't need that I need it to go to zero so that's why I want that fuse to blow down to zero and let's go ahead and turn our power on see what kind of flow we got and we're looking good all right this will conclude the maintenance for the silver cell Got that all set up and running. Now let's take these filters over here to the fume hood. And let's get set up over here. 
to maybe start processing these things in the fume hood. These are all the anode filters I have accumulated. I guess we'll start out with the, uh, get this out of the way. We'll start out with this one that we just pulled out of the uh, sewer cell. I'm just gonna dump this right in. There's the slimes, that goop that I just poured off. That's the uh, material, that black stuff that will contain traces of platinum group metals maybe even a little bit of gold so I'm gonna try to rinse all this down into the beaker as best I can when I process carrot gold the carrot gold contains a little bit of platinum group metals and silver when I alloy the additional sterling into the carrot gold and then pull it back out with the nitric those platinum group metals and the silver that's already alloyed with the carrot gold also gets pulled out. The uh, platinum group metals will tend to follow the silver and end up in my silver jar in solution. And then when I put copper in the uh, solutions, the silver solutions, the silver cements out and the platinum group metals also cement out of those solutions. I've got another beaker here. I'll set it back here. And these rags, these uh, used filters, it's going to have a little bit of stuff on them. So I'll just stick them back there. I will need to soften these things up because they dry hard as a rock. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of distilled water on them to soften them up a little bit. Now, these things are very messy. Back here. And I got to tell you the truth, I'm not looking forward to processing these filters, but they're accumulating and building up on me. I need to get them moving to, to create some space. And they're just sitting in, in my shop, taking up room. So we might as well go ahead and uh, start processing them and make a video out of it. Let's pour some water in our beaker up here. What I'll do is uh, start dissolving out the metals that are soluble in nitric acid by putting a little bit of nitric acid in here. The silver and the palladium will go into solution. The copper that's in here will go into solution. I've got to go real slow with this because it's a finely divided material. After I get going a little bit with this, we'll add some heat. Right now I don't have any heat going in here. And the goal here is to dissolve out the silver and the palladium out of there. Palladium is the only one of the six sister metals in the platinum group that's soluble in just nitric acid. So these nitric boils will pull the palladium out and the silver out and the copper out. Any platinum group metals other than palladium that's in our material will get left behind as a fine black powder. Any gold that made it into our impure cement silver will also remain insoluble and not dissolve in this nitric acid. So we're using the nitric acid to pull out the palladium copper and the silver and the other metals will get left behind as a fine black powder and we'll work with them later on. With that new anode filter installed we've got the uh, current flow up to 1.99 almost 2 amps and I found that the best thing to do with this anode electrode bar is just take some of our impure silver shot and just kind of bury it in there and this provides the best uh, contact in the cell. All right, here we got a, a 
planned event coming up in a future video. If you remember, a few months ago, I alloyed seven grams of pure gold with five grams of palladium. Is that right? Yeah, to make 14K gold, 14K white gold ingot. Here it is. I saved it. And so what we're going to do in this future video is I've got an uh, ounce of palladium here. And we're going to try and experiment. I'm going to use palladium to in-quart the 14K gold in this 14K gold little ingot here. We're going to try to do a recovery using palladium to in-quart. Normally we use silver to in-quart the 14K gold. I'm going to use this palladium in a future video coming up. All right, this will uh, complete part one of the Silver Cell Anode Filters Recovery and Refining series of videos. Thank you for watching.